The New Testament lesson for today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 43 through 48. Give heed now to the word of the Lord. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In February 2002, an American journalist was murdered in Pakistan. He was not just murdered, he'd been kidnapped and forced to sit in front of a video camera and beg for his life. Kidnappers made unreasonable demands. They ignored the pleas from his newspaper, from our government, from the uh, reporter's family, including his wife, who was pregnant at the time. And after several days, the kidnappers cut off his head, videotaped the process, and cut up his body and buried it so the police could finally find it days later. And not long after this man's murder, I met the man's father. I met him at the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church USA, which is the national level meeting of our denomination. It meets every other year. And during that week-long gathering, I would run into this man and see him different places, different times. He spoke at one luncheon of one small group, or uh, he would address another organization that had their special meeting during General Assembly. Uh, he spoke at spontaneous gatherings in the hallways of the conference center. Well, being a, that the General Assembly is a Christian gathering, at one of these places, someone dared to ask this man a bold question. Have you been able to forgive this man or the people who murdered your son? Have you found a way to love your enemies? No, he said. That's the trouble with you Christians. You love too generously. I love only one thing, my hate. Hate is what I've become. Hate is what I've embraced. And I have a right to hate those people. Man, i got to tell you, he, he has a point. He has seen videotapes of his son being brutally murdered. That videotape is somewhere on the internet. The father's seen it. Uh, all of his friends saw it. Someday, this victim's young son, We'll probably Google it one day and watch his father's death. How can that family not hate the people who did such a brutal thing? They have a right. Now, I've never been through what that man has been through, and, and part of me is happy that I do not know the depth of that man's pain. I don't want to know what he has gone through. But I think that each of us here feel that we do have a right to hate someone because something terrible has happened to all of us. Something that is unique, something no one else can understand, and we don't forgive because that would be absurd for us to forgive, and we don't love because we feel like we've got a right to hate. Just taking one slice of pain in the world today, statistics tell us that one in six women have been sexually assaulted. Statistically speaking, that means that if you take the number of people who were here at worship service last Sunday, 50 women in the congregation at the two services had experienced 
sexual assault. Well, let's say that we are a statistical anomaly and say that only half that number among us, the women, have been sexually assaulted. That still leaves 25, 25 women whom we know have had something horrible happen to them. You see, it's not just the bad things out there or over in Pakistan or someplace else. We've had bad things happen. Our loved ones, our friends have endured terrible, unspeakable things. People have been victimized and abused as children when they could not defend themselves. And they were victimized by the very people who were supposed to love them and take care of them. They have a right to hate. And good people go to work day after day, and one day they go to work, and they're fired in a humiliating, dehumanizing way. And they are angry, and they feel like they've got a right to hate. Family discovers a child has cancer, and they pray, and they hope that one day things will be better. And one day they stand at a grave, and they watch a tiny little casket lowered into the ground, and they hate They're angry, and it's not satisfying enough for them to hate the cancer. They hate the doctors who couldn't cure it. They hate the nurses who would, in uh, doing their job and trying to be helpful, would poke the poor child with all those painful needles in the fragile child's arm, and they hate their pastor because the pastor represents God Almighty, and if they have the courage, they'll hate God himself because they have a right to hate And then along comes Jesus Christ, who in his Sermon on the Mount said, You've heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I tell you this, love your enemies. Jesus Christ, how can you say that? How can Jesus say to the man who worked so hard and honestly and faithfully, who has been fired in a humiliating fashion, love your boss? After all, doesn't that person have a right to hate? And how can Jesus Christ say to the family of a dead child, love the doctors and the nurses and and the pastor and me, even though you think we have failed your daughter? After all, doesn't the family have a right to have hatred? And how can Jesus Christ say to the person who was raped or the person who was robbed or the person who was humiliated, love? And how can he say to the father who watched a video of his son being decapitated, love your enemies? After all, Haven't some people earned the terrible right to hate? The reporter of that question, uh, uh, or the father of that reporter who was asked the question uh, about, have you found a way to love your enemy or forgive your enemy for what they did to your son? He said, the problem with you Christians is that you love too generously. And that's not the problem. Because Lord knows we haven't loved loved generously enough. Because we do hate and we do despise and we do convince ourselves that we have the right to feel that way. Loving generously is not the problem. Loving generously is the goal. And it's a goal that most of us have never really been able to meet, if any of us. What did Jesus know about all of this anyway? I mean, really, did he ever have uh, a a wife who was sexually assaulted? No. Did he have a daughter die of cancer? Uh, Did he ever turn a computer on and see the video of his son being brutally murdered? Uh, Nobody ever fired Jesus from a job, or at least I don't think so. And then what does he know about humiliation? And yet here is Jesus Christ who was deserted by his most trusted friends, who was mistreated by the government, who was himself assaulted, beaten, and tortured. Here is Jesus Christ nailed to a cross, put to death, and if there had been an internet back then, his mother Mary would have had to suffer from YouTube videos 
showing the reruns of the crucifixion. Jesus had as much right to hate as we do, if not more so. But Jesus found that it was possible even to love his enemies. Jesus was hanging on a cross at his feet. People have taken his clothing and they're playing games to see who wins the right to take his clothes home with them. It's not bad enough that your life is being taken away. You have to die in front of people who don't care. And more than that, you have to die in front of people who are gambling for your clothing. Jesus, from the world's point of view, did have a right to hate, but instead he prays, Father, forgive them. I'm not going to suggest that you don't have the right to hate. From the world's point of view, you may have every right. Maybe you have the right to hate the person who humiliated you, took advantage of you, fired you, deserted you, raped you, assaulted you, or did unspeakable things to you. But what Jesus does is to offer a better way for you and for the world. You may think you have the right to hate, but Jesus says, love your enemies. The problem with Christians is not that we've loved too generously. The problem is that we have not loved generously enough. It is a struggle. It is tough. But the worst thing of all is to give up trying to love our enemies. July 12, 1986, New York City, police officer Stephen McDonald. He was on patrol in Central Park. He stopped to question some teenagers, and one of them, 15 years old, took out a gun and shot the police officer. Shot the officer in the head and the neck, but he survived. He was rushed to the hospital, and while they saved his life, he was paralyzed from the neck down. He'd been married for eight months, and his 23-year-old wife had just found out that she was pregnant. After 18 months in the hospital, 18 months, that's a year and a half. That's more than twice the amount of time he'd been married when he was shot. After 18 months, McDonald was finally able to go home. And one of the first things he and his wife did was to have their son baptized. And at the baptism, McDonald addressed the congregation and said that he had been able to forgive the 15-year-old who had forever changed his life and not necessarily for the better. And he encouraged the congregation to find the ability to forgive as well. McDonald told the church, I wanted to free myself from all of the negative, destructive emotions that this act of violence awoke in me. All the anger and the bitterness and the hatred. And it was taking over my life. And I needed to free myself of all of these negative feelings so that I could be free to love my wife and our child and those around us. And I knew that as long as I had such anger and bitterness and hatred, that 15-year-old would not have only taken away my ability to walk, but my ability to love and to live. In the years following the shooting, McDonald has often told people that the only thing worse than taking a bullet in the spine was to have that anger and hatred in his heart. And he found a better way. And he would be the first one to say that it wasn't easy. And it was difficult. And he will admit if he were here today, what he admitted many times, that when he stood at his, or sat, at his son's baptism and announced that he had forgiven that 15-year-old, he had to forgive him again the next day and the next day and the next day. It took a long time for it to take root. But he learned to love his enemy because he didn't give up on the difficult challenge. He kept at it. On October 2nd, 2006, a man walked into a school and began killing and wounding students and teachers. The school was in an Amish community, and the grandfather 
of one of the murdered children told CNN television, we must not think evil of this man who killed our children. I remember watching that and being in awe of the faith that that man had and wondering, is he serious? Could I ever come close to that? That community had a right to hate, but they sought love and forgiveness, and out of that they found healing. As a community, shortly after the killing, just a day or two later, the whole community marched to the home of the parents of the man who had killed their children and grandchildren and spouses. Now, in any other time or place, that would have meant trouble. But they were marching to the house of that family not to do anything ill of them, but to help them to grieve and to show them love and to show them forgiveness and mercy. We clothe ourselves with hatred and bitterness we are humiliated, we are hurt, so we strike out against everyone else because we know we've got the right to hate. But at some point, we've got to learn to let go of that. And we've got to walk out of that cycle of hatred and more hatred and bitterness and more bitterness. And we've got to stop clothing ourselves in bitterness and instead find a way to do what the Scriptures tell us to do. Colossians says, clothe yourself. With compassion, kindness, gentleness. And maybe we do have the right to hate. But Jesus offers us a different approach and a better approach. It is time for us to start learning how to love generously. And now unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be ascribed all might, power, dominion, and glory, today and forever. Amen.